Summer is a busy time on the island of Sodor. Holiday makers have so much to see and do. There are trips to the seaside, balloon rides in the country, and the brass band playing in the park. One morning, James was in a hurry. He didn't even stop to say hello to Percy. Thomas was pleased to see James. What's up? Your smile is as bright as your smoke box. I'm on my way to pick up the brass band," replied James. "The concert is tomorrow night. Don't crack your smoke box," teased Thomas. James couldn't wait to hear the brass band play their wonderful music. He was so excited about meeting the brass band that he didn't notice Big Mickey. Big Mickey was unloading a huge ship's boiler. Suddenly, he swung the boiler and knocked James right off the track. Sorry," said Big Mickey. Cranky had been watching. "You useless little engines are always in the way." Poor James. Sir Top and Hat came immediately. We will take you to the fish yard, and Bertie will have to meet the brass band instead of you. James was sad. That night, a raging storm rolled in. The fitters worked through the night trying to mend James. The rain pelted down. Now James felt sad and very damp. Morning came, and Sir Topham had arrived. Please, sir," pleaded James. "Will the fitters be finished soon?" "Not soon enough, and the band can't wait." "I'm sorry, James. Bertie will take them to the concert." James felt worse than ever. Bertie collected the brass band and set off immediately. He bummed cheerfully along the country roads. But there was trouble ahead. Last night's storm had flooded the road. Bertie's driver decided to take a shortcut. But it was very muddy. Bertie's wheels did not like the mud. They scooted, they skated, they slid, and they slipped. I'm stuck," he groaned. Ugh. Bertie revved his engine, but his wheels spun round and round. He couldn't budge. The brass band were worried. We mustn't be late for our concert. Tune up your tuba," cried the leader for the band. "We'll call for help." By now, James was mended and hooked up to his coaches. I can hear music," said his driver. "That's not music," wheezed James. "That's an alarm." And they raced off to the rescue. The musicians were delighted to see their friend, and so was Bertie. "I'll get you to the concert in time," James cried. "Thank you," said the worry bandsman. That night, the concert was a great success. Everyone loved the music, especially James. Duke repairs the railway that winds through the mountains on the island of Sodor. The old engine checks that the tracks, tunnels, and bridges are all in good working order. One day, Duke was crossing the old wooden bridge. There was a big bump in the track. Duke's driver stopped to check the bridge. There are cracks in the supports, he said. Oh, that could be dangerous! cried Duke. 
It might fall down if it's not repaired. And they hurried off to warn the other engines. The engines were waiting for their call when Duke arrived. Don't use the old wooden bridge, said Duke. It's dangerous. How would you know, wheezed Duncan. You're only an old engine. And he puffed crossly away. He didn't even wait for his call. Duke hurried down the mountain to tell Mr. Percival the bad news. Thank you, said Mr. Percival. I'll send engineers to investigate the bridge. Meanwhile, nobody is to use it. Duke's driver put up a sign, lying closed. The engines had to travel a different way. Meanwhile, Duncan needed more coal to get home. But when he arrived at the coal bunker, it was empty. Bother! I won't get home without more coal. Where is the nearest bunker? On the other side of the old wooden bridge. But you can't cross it. Duke said it's not safe. Duke always makes things sound worse than they are. I'm sure one trip across the old wooden bridge won't hurt," added his driver. When they got to the junction, Duncan's driver removed the sign, and they set off towards the bridge. This was a big mistake. Suddenly, Duncan hissed to a halt. I'm out of steam. He had used up all his coal. What's that? He asked nervously. His driver looked out. The old wooden bridge was starting to collapse. Grandpa calls the handle. Duncan's gone across the bridge. I better check if he's all right. The old engine said. But the cracks in the supports were getting larger. A beam snapped. Timber pieces splashed into the water below. Help! Whistled Duncan. I'm going to fall. But Duke was on the way. Soon the old engine reached the old wooden bridge. Duncan had never looked so scared. Duke jumped bravely onto the bridge. Careful! Gasped Duncan. Soon they were cobbled up. Hold on," said Duke. "Whoa!" shouted Duncan. The old engine pulled him off the bridge, just in time. "Don't use the old wooden bridge," said Duke. "It's dangerous." Mister Percival was cross with Duncan. That was very irresponsible. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. And Duke, you are very brave. Oh, thanks. Yes, Duke, you are a really useful engine. Thank you, sir. Duke felt very reliable too.